Hello and welcome to our angle measure notes. So today we're going to talk about how to measure angles, so to speak, and we're going to talk about what certain kinds of angles might be based on their angle measure. So the first thing we're going to talk about is some definitions. So the first thing we have here is degree. So a degree you might have heard as a measurement of temperature. It is also a measurement for angles and it talks and it determines like how narrow or wide an angle is. So for a degree, it's just a unit of measure for an angle. Next, what we're going to talk about is a ray. A ray relates to lines and line segments where the ray is part of a line with one end point and one end that extends infinitely. So a ray essentially has a starting point, a point where it starts, but then it goes on in one direction forever. All right, so here's our definition and an image of a ray. Um, so the other thing to note here is rays, just like lines and line segments, take two points to create. So when we write the name of a ray, we will use two letters to write its name. So the ray that I have drawn here would be called ray AB. For rays, the only difference is, and we'll get into this later, it is important which letter you write first because it tells you which direction the ray is going. So in this case, the ray starts at A and goes through B. So when we write AB, that's telling us that that first letter A is the starting point of our ray. And then the notation here, we are going to put the line, like with the line segment, and we just have one arrow to signify that it is a ray and it's going in one of the directions. Next we have opposite rays. Opposite rays are two rays that are going in opposite directions, but they share an endpoint. So in the end, they essentially create a line because one of the rays is going, for example, to the left, and then its endpoint would be here, and then we'd have a second ray that has this endpoint, but it's going in the opposite direction to the right, so it ends up creating a line because it's going to go forever in both directions. Next, we have an angle. So angles you've most likely seen before, um, and Something to bring up here is uh, opposite rays form a line. So things that share lines, like points, we call collinear. So opposite rays are collinear because they create a line, so they're on the same line. But an angle is formed by two non-collinear rays that share an endpoint. So it's two rays that are not opposites. Technically, there is a name for that as well. Um, but it's formed by two rays that share an endpoint and are not collinear. All right, so I updated this because I realized the definitions are a little squished, so I'm going to alternate colors between definitions so that you can tell the difference between which is which. Uh, so angle... All right, so if we had two rays, for example, here and here, these share this endpoint right here, but they don't create a line, so they form what we call an angle. So the next thing we have is a vertex. So vertex is the name for that endpoint that the rays have in common when creating an angle. So in this picture here, this point that they have in common, the endpoint that's name, is the vertex. Right? And then the last piece of information for this set of 
definitions is an angle bisector. So we did mention bisectors in our segments because a segment bisector cuts a segment in half. It goes through the segment's midpoint. An angle bisector is the same idea. It cuts an angle into two congruent angles. It cuts it in half. So if there's a, something that we're told that is an angle bisector, that means it cuts the big angle in half and the two smaller angles will be equal because they will be congruent. All right, so in this example here, I have, it doesn't look 100% like to scale, but what I'm showing here is that this blue line is the angle bisector of this red angle. So in segments, we showed that two lines were congruent by having a matching number of little slashes through them. So these two black lines that I drew, they are congruent because they both have one slash. If they both have two slashes, they're congruent. If one has one and one has two, they're not congruent. They don't have the same number of slash marks. Angles, we have something similar by drawing these little arcs. So you'll see I gave them both one arc. That means they're congruent. So if we had two angles, these both have one arc they're congruent. Um, if I had to do it for more than one and show that some were congruent to some of them and then there was a different group of congruent ones, you might see them with two arcs. So now they both have two little arcs in there. They're congruent because they have the same number of arcs. If, only, if one of them only had one and one had two, they would not be congruent because they don't have the same number of little arcs in them. Uh, then I also wrote here x, so we're just showing that these both have the same measure, and in this case it would be the measure of x. So let's talk about some things here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a picture of an angle, and we're going to talk about some things we can do to label angles and talk about them. Uh, and then we're going to go over some definitions as well in terms of specific types of angles. All right, so let's first talk about labeling angles. So if we're given an angle, how can we label them? So the first thing we have here is we want to talk about the vertex. So once again, we went over the definition of vertex, but just to be a little more specific here, in this example, B the point B is the vertex. It's that point at the corner of the angle. We have ways to name angles as well. So when you name angles, we also have two ways to name them, just like we had two ways to name a line and two names to name a plane. So if you name an angle using three letters to show them, so you'll see here we have three points used to create this angle, A, B, and C, you have to make sure the vertex is the middle letter. So If we did this, our angle names would be angle, you'll see we draw a little angle to show that we're talking about an angle, A, B, C, you'll see B is in the middle because B is the vertex, or we could call this angle C, B, A. Once again, B is in the middle, so this time we went C to B to A. It's like we were drawing it. We were connecting, we went from C to B, B to A. The other thing here is sometimes they give you little numbers in your pictures to help you see which angle they're talking about as well. That's what that 4 is. That 4 is not a measure because it doesn't have a degree symbol. So this angle is not four degrees. This is angle four. And they use these because it's sometimes easier to just write angle four instead of trying to figure out which letters you want to use to name the angle. 
And then the last thing here, we have the sides of the angle. The sides of the angle are the two rays used to create it. So our two rays are ray BA, going from B to A, and ray BC. All right, next we have our specific kinds of angles. So you'll see here we say, what is it? What does it look like? So the measure, a right angle, we've talked about right angles before, most likely. A right angle is specifically a 90 degree angle. So it's any angle with exactly 90 degrees. And you'll see that drawn. And it usually looks like a, a perfect corner. And they'll always, mostly, unless like they want you to figure out that it's a right angle, they'll give you this square here in the corner to show you that that is a 90 degree angle. An acute angle is any angle less than 90 degrees. So some people like to talk about it. Acute angles are small, and usually we say small things are cute. So this is a small, and this is an acute small angle. So we're going to show that by doing here. We're going to draw this 90 degree corner here. So an acute angle would be an angle that's less than 90 degrees. So this blue would be an acute angle. An obtuse angle is an angle that is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So it's more than 90 but less than 180. And then we do have an, a name for angles that are bigger than 180. We're not going to have to worry about that, that as much. Um, but in case anybody's curious, those are called reflex angles. Um, but we don't need to, you don't have to have that term in your pocket. So once again, obtuse angles. So this would be our 90 degree angle. Obtuse angles would be bigger, so they go out more. They're more than 90 degrees. All right, so let's take this information and answer some questions. So we have some pictures here. So this picture up here, this goes with questions A, B, and C. Question four uses this picture, and so does question five. So the only thing, even though it uses the same picture, each of these two questions is a different situation. So we do want to be sure that whatever we get for question four, we do not use um, that information to influence what we decide in question five. All right, example or question A says name all angles that have a vertex, have the vertex of B. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find out where is point B. So point B is right here. And we have some angles here that have B as our vertex. Uh, some of the angles have multiple names that you could give them. So what I want you guys to do, because I did explain a vertex and I showed it, I do want you guys to give me, uh, Don't you don't have to name all of them, give me two or three angles that have a vertex of B. 
All right, so here I have the entirety of this answer. Um, there's all 11 ways to write the four angles. So there are four angles with a vertex of B. Um, all of them have at least two ways to write it and three of them have a number name as well. So you'll see here five, six, and seven. Those are angles with B as the vertex. So then what I also gave you guys is we have angle G, B, A. We go from G to B to A. Or we could have called it A, B, G. So all the angles have two names where you could change the order. So angle seven could also be called angle A, B, D, or it could be called angle D, B, A. Angle six could be called angle D, B, E, or it could be called angle E, B, D. And then angle five could be called angle E, B, G, or G, B, E. All right, angle B, or example B, name the sides of angle five. So the sides, what are the two rays of angle five? Oh, I actually missed an option for one of them. So the sides of angle five, this I think is a little more of a tough idea. So angle five is this angle right here. So the sides are the two rays that create it. So remember the rays have to start at your vertex and go out. So the two rays that it has are ray B, G, because it goes from B to G, and ray B, E. So B, G, or B, E. Now, uh, I did miss something. So technically, because the ray keeps going out, B, F is also an option, uh, which also means we could do for when we talked about angle 5, it could be F, B, G, or G, B, F. So B, F is also technically one of the sides of angle 5, but B, E, and B, F are technically the same ray because they start at B and go in the same direction. Um, F is just, F and E are just both on the same ray, so we could use either of those to decide um, and explain which direction we're going. All right, and then let's see if you were paying attention. I technically gave away some answers for example C, so why don't you go ahead and give me another name for angle six. All right, so this one here is angle six. It's formed here. So we have four names that we could use here. I gave you two when we did example A. So we could do angle D, B, E. So that's one of the ones that I gave you in example A. We could also do angle E, B, D. So we just changed the first and last letter. Because example six, or angle six has this one side with the F, we could also do angle D, B, F, because that still goes here, we go from D to B to F, and it still creates this angle. So 
so which means we can also do F B D. All right, next we're going to get into the puzzle slash algebra version of these. So measure angle T Y V and classify it as right, acute, or obtuse. Now for this, we don't have Ty. I'm sorry, that's a typo. That's supposed to be a W. No, it is a V. Sorry. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to explain four. So we don't have to do actual measuring. So we could, um, in theory, there's a way to do, uh, use um, what's called a protractor and measure angles. Now with us being virtual, um, we're going to talk about ways to do this that are slightly different. So angle TYV, let's do a color that's going to show up. is this one right here because we go from T to Y to V. Now what we have here is something that we're going to talk about in next chapter um, is some angles that match up with some things here and what we get to know is that because this right angle is formed here the opposite side of it will also make a right angle. So the measuring part is this side is 90 degrees. This side will also be 90 degrees and that's because of the straight line here. So TYV, so angle TYV. So if you're telling the measure of an angle, you'll do M, which shows that you're talking about the measure of the angle, not just the angle itself. The measure of angle TYV is equal to 90 degrees. That means it is a right angle. Oops, T. All right, so now for question five, we get to reset. So we don't wanna use the information from question four to influence question five. Oh, I forgot to fix the, this should be D and E, oops. So we're going to get rid of that. Ray, Y, T. So Y, T. Bisects angle S, Y, U. That means it cuts it in half. That means this half and this half are the same. So that means S, Y, T and T, Y, U are equal. Or however, whatever order they give us. So it bisects S, Y, U. So these two are the same. So T, Y, S, that's this side here, is 2x minus 24. Uyt is the other side, that is x plus 16. Find the measure of x and syu. So the first thing we get to do is we know because they were bisected, like I was saying, these two angles, angle T Y S is equal to angle U, Y, T. That means we can replace these with the algebra that they gave us. So that means 2X minus 24 is equal to X plus 16. And now that we have this, we can solve for X. We get X minus 24 equals 16. x equals 
40. So we know x equals 40. And since x equals 40, we can now find the measure of our angle. They want to know the measure of the entire angle, not just one of the little pieces. So what we can do here is we can plug in 40 for x to both of those, and that will give us the total when we put those together. So angle TYS is equal to 2 times 40 minus 24, which equals 80 minus 24, which is 56. Measure of angle UYT is equal to X, which is 40, plus 16, which is 56. So this, these are each 56 degrees, so that means the total angle SYU is equal to 56 plus 56, which would be 112 degrees. So this is why sometimes you want to look at these and not take the picture to heart and just follow what they give you. The pictures aren't always drawn to scale. Because right now, if we look at SYU, that does not look like it's going to be 112 degrees. It probably looks to you like it's a right angle. Um, so that is the end of our angle measure lesson. If you have any questions, put them in at the end of this video.